think that you are stupid enough to think you are actually the most transparent brand in the entire world. Like. Hello pretty people, I'm Izzy aka The Quirky Environmentalist and here on this channel as well as my blog we talk about sustainable living, ethical fashion, environmentalism, all that jazz. Um, now recently H&M got themselves into a little bit of a mess with the sustainability community over some things to do with the Fashion Revolution's Fashion Transparency Index. Um, now if you're not in that world or even just a, this little part of the sustainable fashion world then you probably will not have heard about this and so I'm going to talk you through it. <laughs> I really enjoyed my last video I did on Pretty Little Thing and everything wrong with them um, and I feel like I'm becoming <laughs> a fashion drama channel which I have absolutely no issue with. Although drama is probably the wrong word for this. Now first of all, before I start this video, I want to say thank you to Ajababa, Melissa Watt and Sustainable Fashion Matters with a Z on Instagram. Um, these are three people that I got a lot of the resources for and followed along as things were happening with all of this stuff um, and all do really good work within the sustainable fashion world. I will also be taking from a lot of other sources um, and all of the sources and all the information I got will be in the description hello so let's get into it shall we now i'm sure most of you probably know who h&m are but here's just a bit of background to set the scene they're a swedish owned brand and they're one of the biggest fast fashion brands in the world in the financial year 2018 to 2019 they sold over 2.2 billion units of clothing worldwide beaten only by zara so they are a massive company um, their CEO has a worth of 1.6 billion and their biggest um, shareholder, Stefan Pearson, who I believe is in the same family as their CEO, has a net worth of 14.6 billion dollars. The general business model for H&M seems to be make an awful lot of clothes and an awful lot of money. Um, now. Looking at Fashion Revolution, in 2013 the Rana Plaza collapse occurred which was a factory collapse in Bangladesh which killed over 1,100 people and injured more than 2,000 more. This sparked outrage and started Fashion Revolution. H&M were one of the brands who were making their clothes in this factory at the time and had a lot of scrutiny put upon them at the time, rightfully so. Since then, they have been trying to clean up their act. In 2013, they announced that they were committed to paying each of their 850,000 garment workers in their supply chain a living wage. Now, as far as I can see, this hasn't actually happened. They don't even pay um, their UK workers the national living wage, or does this just apply to garment workers whose living wage is much, much lower than in the UK? Now, every year, Fashion Revolution released their Fashion Transparency Index. This looks at the top 250 brands in the world, and just to give you a little context to that, that means that you have to be making more than $400 million a year to be on this list. And basically, they look into how transparent each of these brands are, from policy to actually fixing things within the supply chain. Fashion Revolution Week make it very clear at the start of their transparency index that first of all this is not a shopping guide and shouldn't be used as one, that's not what it's made for, and also that transparency is just the start. To make a more sustainable and ethical supply chain, which is the end goal, to just have these supply chains be inherently sustainable and ethical, not have them as an added extra, transparency needs to be there because if you don't know you have issues within your supply chain, you cannot fix them and also you could be claiming that you're sustainable and ethical and all of these wonderful things whilst doing absolutely nothing if you're not actually transparent with your customers. Now in 2020 H&M topped this list with a score of 73%. This is the best that any brand has ever done on the transparency index and well, it's a good sign in a lot of ways that they are starting to clean up their act, but it doesn't mean that they've reached the end goal and it doesn't mean that they're this fabulous, amazing company. But they took it as they were and put out a very misleading tweet slash Instagram post, which I will read to you now. 
and we're going to look at why this is just just a lie had this lovely picture that says H&M is the world's most transparent brand I don't have the full um, caption in the screenshot I have but this is basically what it said that's us, the world's most transparent brand, that's us we've the highest ranked brand in the fashion revolution transparency index 2020 say what? this, this this made me very angry because it is an outright blatant lie um, they are not the world's most transparent brand they're just they're just not and um, they they knew what they were doing when they put this post out there um, it was very calculated shall we say um, as I said before fashion revolutions transparency index rates the top 250 biggest brands in the world. Biggest brands in the world meaning they are some of the top polluters, some of the top supporters of human rights violations in the fashion supply chain. Um, I could go on. <laughs> Basically H&M at best are the best of the worst which I don't think is something to... well I mean in a way it's something to celebrate that they're doing better, yes, well done. Um, but they're not the best in the world. Countless, countless, countless sustainable brands that were not included on this because they don't produce an unsustainable amount of clothing like all of the brands on this list do were not, were not included on this list and they would laugh at the level of transparency that H&M has. A lot of sustainable brands, you buy a top for them, they'll tell you exactly what it was dyed with, exactly who it was made by. They could probably tell you <laughs> the favourite colour of the seamstress who sewed the pieces together they can tell you where it was farmed, who the farmer is and um, how much he's paid, you know all of these things, a lot of sustainable brands can tell you exactly where their, com their clothes are coming from who's making them and they have a relationship with their supply chain being able to tell me where some of your t-shirts are made in terms of what factory it could be made in, which could be made in any of seven factories by like, I don't know, any one of thousands of people. Sure, it's a step in the right direction, but that is that is nowhere near the most transparent brand in the world. Not even in the slightest. Also in that caption, although I don't have the full one, I'll try and find it to put up, they um, pertained this to sustainability. Um, and transparency is not the same as sustainability in any stretch of the imagination. You need transparency to attain sustainability, but you're not automatically a sustainable brand just because you're transparent about where your clothes come from. And I do appreciate that H&M have had several initiatives in the last however many years to try and be more sustainable, um, <laughs> but they've also been accused of burning loads of surplus stock which isn't sustainable and sure they might have learnt their lesson since then but creating two billion pieces of clothing a year a number that is unimaginable like you can't actually tangibly think about how many that is most like <laughs> that's never going to be sustainable and trying to call yourself a sustainable brand just because you're more transparent than the rest of the worst brands in the world in terms of sustainability doesn't make you sustainable just doesn't um and h&m realized this lots of people including myself called them out and very shortly after the post was put up they just deleted it poof gone as if it never happened um <laughs> And everyone was sort of like, wait, what? Um, yeah, sure, you shouldn't have said those things, but where's the actual acknowledgement of what you did wrong? Where's the apology? You've just pretended this didn't happen. But um, the thing is H&M, you can't just delete something and pretend it didn't happen. Um, because first of all, you have 3.3 million followers on Instagram. Screenshots exist and they all have memories. And also the damage was already done. I saw articles coming out, which I'm sure H&M had nudged, um, saying that H&M's the most transparent brand in the world. Are those gonna get deleted as well? The ones singing your praises? An apology did come. It came five days later. 
in the form of another Instagram post. Um, <laughs> you took your time on that one, didn't you? Well, I say apology because it wasn't really an apology or a proper acknowledgement of their faults in this situation. Um, it was them kind of trying to cover their asses, and it was, <laughs> ironically, not very transparent at all. So let's look into that bit, shall we? But it's this lovely picture of a white shirt against a blue background. Ooh, we're so innocent, look at our lovely shirt. And also this is imagery that a lot of sustainable brands use, so I'll see what you do in that H&M. So we're going to read this out because it's still up on the page and we're going to pull it apart. Do you know what the Fashion Transparency Index by Fashworth is? Yes. It's an annual report reviewing how openly fashion brands share information. Blah 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 blah. Transparency is an important tool in the process of making the fashion industry more sustainable. If companies like ours say that we're, we care of both planet and people, we need to be able to prove it. You think? And also in here, they're basically still putting out like, Oh, look at us, we do care. We just need to prove it. And we are proving it. Last week we found out we're the highest scoring brand in 2020 fashion transparency index. We've worked with transparency for a long time. You have. It's taken you a very long time to get to this point. It's like seven years since like the world was calling for you to do better after Rana Plaza but you know. <laughs> so seeing this result got us really excited. Actually too excited. We wanted to share the good news with you all, so we created a post on social media saying that we're now the most transparent brand in the world. Now that was us taking it a bit too far. Fashion Rev quickly pointed out to us, yes, Fashion Revolution did, as did hundreds if not thousands of other people. And they're absolutely right. Here's what the report concludes, basically they're not the best in the world, we disclose more, uh, more information than the other brands, that's a good start. Um, but more importantly than to tell is to do. We have a great responsibility. We want to use our brand to change the world and making fashion industry circular and sustainable. Transparency is one of the cornerstones of our ambitions, but it is not the only one. We're on a journey. On our website you can read more about what we're doing and what we've done so far. Let's change fashion together. I have so many issues with this. First of all, I pointed out they're like, oh we care about the product, we need to prove it to you, we are doing our bit, we just need to prove it better, don't we? That was the first bit. Second of all, um, when they're like, oh we got a little bit too excited and we published this and whoops, our bad. Um, you're not like one person who, I don't know, <laughs> you're not a little kid who just won, a ra won your first school race and it's going around going, I'm the fastest boy in the world, ah. That's getting a little bit too carried away. and. You're not even one person running a business who's struggling, who maybe made a mistake and is still learning these things. You're one of the biggest fashion brands in the world. Everything you put out is calculated and has a team of people behind it, especially when it comes to something as important as this. So no, you didn't just make a little mistake. This was, You put this out on purpose because you thought that you could deceive your customers. Don't think that you are stupid enough to think you are actually the most transparent brand in the entire world. Like, you have some of the best PR people, I imagine, in the industry working for you. So, no, don't give me an excuse of, oh, sorry, we made a little mistake. Look at us. Like, you're a human. You're not. You're one of the biggest fashion brands in the world, and there are teams of people. It's all calculated. It is not, look at us, we're human too. Because yes, there are humans working within your core marketing team, but it's not just one person or one intern who posted that and made a big mistake, is it? Also, then they go into, we have a great responsibility, we're on a journey, which, like, I agree with, but the way they've put it forward is very much like, feel sorry for us, we're trying our best, rather than actually apologising and recognising everything that they did wrong and actually saying, these are things we can work on because on our website you can read more about what we're doing and what we've done so far, that is looking at what you're doing now that's great and what you've already done that's great. That is not looking at your mistakes and being truly transparent and saying these are the things we did wrong. The Fashion Transparency Index is split into five different areas. 
The first two are about policy and commitments and governance and these are the ones that H&M got perfect scores in which a lot of brands got perfect scores in because they're about having the framework in place so they're about saying this is what we're committed to doing and these are the policies that we want to put in place and this is the thing that we're trying to do those are perfect if you get a good team together you can write up all these reports of all the wonderful things you want to do in your supply chain <laughs> The things that H&M did not do so well on were no show and fix and spotlighting their issues which is about finding the issues within their supply chain, reporting on those properly so that their consumers can see it and also finding the, these issues in their supply chain, knowing that they're issues and being able to fix them to make their supply chain better and these are the ones that they did a lot worse on um, which I think kind of goes to show the issue with this as well you need to not only be telling us all the amazing things we're doing, you're going to want to do that, that's good for PR, but you also need to come out and say these are things that are issues within our supply chain, actually not just saying oh there might be issues or oh we have things to work on, detailing what the issues are and how you're trying to solve them, because that's how you fix issues and you go beyond transparency. And at the end let's change fashion together, that's just this phrase, like, I get that that's what I've been saying in Fashion Revolution Week and what everyone's saying, but this is coming from people who are doing a lot of the groundwork when it comes to sustainability and transparency, not a global brand who's like, it's kind of on the back burner for them. And this, rightfully so, also caused outrage within the sustainability and um, sustainable fashion and ethical fashion world with lots of people basically saying this isn't an apology because it's not, they don't say sorry, they don't apologise in any of this, they don't properly admit to what they've done wrong, they just went oh look at us getting too excited because we did a good thing but it wasn't quite as good as we thought it was, sorry but you need to apologise properly. And then Aja um, started the hashtag have you tried making it less stuff which I think is brilliant, it applies to lots of big brands and so um, she I, many others, went onto this post by H&M and started commenting, basically being like, um, why is your actual apology, this is an apology, and to be more sustainable, have, have you tried making less stuff? Um, have you? Surprisingly, we haven't got a response from H&M. <laughs> um, on this post, there are lots of people saying, hey, I'm having issues with my order, or hey, I ordered then, or hey, I'm trying to find this on your website, and they've replied to all those comments in detail trying to help their customers out but all of us who are going um excuse me this isn't a real apology um oh excuse me have you tried making that stuff have just been ignored that's really transparent isn't it it's really yeah really shows they're working towards sustainability mm -hmm. since then i've heard nothing they've just kind of washed over it carried on posting as normal pretended this this is all done and this hasn't happened and they're all amazing yeah it's just love this look what's flower in your language like the general H&M stuff I'm sorry but that's just not that's not the end of it do better H&M address the people in your comments not just the customers but the people calling you out because we're not just doing this because we don't like you we're doing this because we actually want to see the change in the fashion industry which you claim you want to do if you actually want to do it then talk to the people <laughs> who are calling you out so yeah my tldr is H&M get named best of the worst by fashion transparency index H&M take that as they're the most susta sustainable, transparent, amazing brand in the world they get called out because this is a blatant lie they take that post down, wait a while then they post an apology which isn't actually an apology basically saying we're great but we're not we're not the best yet and oh sorry for our little mistake, we're so sorry but they didn't actually use the word sorry they just said we got excited look at us as a human not the huge corporation we are so yeah there's lots more to obviously why H&M aren't that amazing and transparent Melissa Watt did an amazing post about basically everything they've done in the last 10 years which has been dodgy so if you want to read up on that that is a good resource 
The links to all of the sources that I've used will be in the description as well as the, to a blog post version of this video as usual. Um, and yeah, if you're a fan of H&M, maybe just consider buying less stuff from them. Support people who really do care more about the environment than lining their billionaire owner's pockets. Also, you can write a tweet, letter, email to H&M asking them hashtag have you tried making less stuff or just ask them who's making their clothes and um, how they're going to do better in sustainability and ethics and their transparency because sure they might be the rest of the worst but they have a long way to go. That is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something. Um, as I said, I talk about ethical fashion, sustainable living, environmental things here on this channel and on my blog. So consider subscribing, follow me on social media for more daily stuff in terms of sustainable living. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.